Today's the Don't Argue the Toss Challenge, and I've got three fun DIYs that will make you pause before you get rid of some of the items you would normally throw away. So cozy up with a warm beverage and let's get crafting. For my first project today, I'm using just a regular old leftover plastic takeout container. It's rectangular in shape, and I thought I could make it look like a small enamel tub. So I started with a quick coat of white chalk paint and I'm using the Waverly brand available at Walmart. Because the container is black, it did take two coats on both of the inside and the outside to get good coverage. While I'm painting, I'll mention that today's video is part of a monthly open challenge hosted by Julia from Crafting with Julia. This month's theme is Don't Argue the Toss, so all of my DIYs today will use items that people would normally throw away. I'll have a link to her channel as well as the playlist for the challenge in the description box below, so be sure to check out her channel and then hop to the playlist to see what everyone comes up with. Once the container was dry, I wanted to give it the characteristic black edges you see in enamelware, so I used black acrylic craft paint and a tiny paintbrush to paint the rim of the container. Then I used the same brush to make a few little scuff marks around the outside of the container to mimic the look of old enamelware that has been banged up a little. I set the container aside to dry and then decided to make some stuffed hearts to fill it. I had a bunch of leftover fabric I snagged at the thrift store on a half off day last year around this time in patterns and colors that I thought would be fun for Valentine's Day, so I'm going to use those. I wanted to have two different sizes of hearts and I'm not very good at freehanding things so I found some board hearts from Dollar Tree that I could trace but you could always print out a heart online. Now these are no so little stuffies so I'm going to be using hot glue and I'm never good at lining two pieces up perfectly together when there's hot glue involved so I found it easiest to just cut the shape out of one piece first then went around the perimeter with hot glue and laid down uncut fabric on top of that. Then once the glue had dried I cut along the glue line to remove the excess fabric. If the two sides of the fabric are different, make sure that the piece you are gluing is face up and that you lay the second piece face down. Also make sure you leave a gap in the glue so that you can turn the fabric right side out. I found it easiest to leave a space at the bottom of one of the flat sides. Be sure to take your time turning the fabric around. Even though the glue holds well, it still isn't quite as strong as thread. Then I stuffed the hearts with leftover polyfill I had from my Santa sack DIY this Christmas, but you can use whatever you have on hand. You could even stuff them with the leftover fabric scraps, or I've also used leftover plastic bags from the grocery store. I glued the opening shut and then repeat, repeat, repeat with the other hearts and fabrics. So happy new year guys! I hope everyone had a wonderful holidays and that everyone is staying healthy in the new year. I took a break from my channel to spend some extra quality time with my boys while they were on break from school and my husband Rob was able to take some time off work so we could do a few fun things as a family. One of the highlights was when we went to Top Golf, which I had never been to before so that was a special treat. And I can finally reveal one of the special gifts that I had made this year. It was so secret that I didn't take any photos or video beforehand to make sure that no one would accidentally see. They were stuffed bears for all four grandkids made from my mother's shirts. I also worked closely with the seamstress to replicate my mother's favorite Christmas sweatshirt into little t-shirts for the bears to wear. The memory bears were a big hit and I'm so glad they have something physical to remember her by. And the sweatshirt still stayed intact so I got to keep it for myself to wear. So I'm curious if anyone has made New Year's resolutions and whether you've kept them or not so far. I didn't make any resolutions this year but I did make some personal goals and also some goals for my channel. I've recently been diagnosed with celiac disease so one of my personal goals is to find great gluten-free recipes to try and just learn as much as possible so that I can get healthy. If you have any gluten-free recipes you'd like to share, I'd love for you to hit me up on Instagram, so find me over there. Also, as for my channel, the biggest goal I have is to get monetized. I've already met the threshold in terms of subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I do need to focus on my watch hours 
If you'd like to help me with this goal, the best way to do that is simply to watch videos. <laughs> if you go to my homepage and click on the playlist tab, I have a playlist created for all of my Dollar Tree DIY videos, which I think there's about 36 videos. So if you have an extra device or just some extra time and want to watch those back, I sure would be grateful. And here they are. I absolutely love how this turned out. The container doesn't look like a plastic takeout container at all, and the hearts are so warm and cozy for Valentine's Day. I especially love the gray and pink plaid pattern. For my next project today, I'm using this little Christmas bucket. This was given to me from a friend a couple years ago, and we ate all the candy that was in it, and it's just been sitting in my storage cabinet ever since. If you've been with my channel from the beginning, you know I love galvanized decor, so I've shown this technique a few times before. I started out by covering the bucket with the charcoal gray elephant color from Waverly. Just one coat is enough since I'll be layering on many different colors in this technique. Once the paint was dry, I used a dry sponge to add on a metallic silver color. I love Martha Stewart's metallic paint. It has great pigment and a little goes a long way. I dip the sponge lightly in the paint, in the paint, in the paint, blot it on a paper a few times and then begin pouncing it onto the bucket. Since there are holes in the sponge, it allows there to be places where the darker gray shows through, which is perfect to achieve the weathered look we're going for. The next color is a granite gray color. Here I'm using the Apple Barrel brand, which is super affordable, only about 50 cents at Walmart. The color is the same tone as the silver color, but it has a matte finish, so the bucket is taking on an even more of an aged look. And finally, I'm using a nutmeg brown color, and a little trick I use is to just snip off the piece of sponge when I switch colors. I'm adding this brown color sparingly around the bucket to give it a slight rusted look. I'm concentrating on the areas that would see the most wear, like around the upper and lower rims and where the handle connects to the bucket. I also added some to the handle itself so that it would look older too. And here it is with some spiky greens and these pinky purple stems that I found at Dollar Tree. I love how this turned out and now I can use it in my decor year round. For my last project today, I'm using leftover condiment jars. I think the big one was a pickle jar, and I have a cavamada olive jar, and the short one I think was garlic. And then I have this scrap piece of old sweater with this wide knit that I thought would look nice as jar covers. I laid the first jar down on the fabric to gauge how much I needed to cut. There was a nice seam along one side of the fabric already, so I didn't have to leave any excess to create a seam for the top. I did, however, leave about a half inch excess fabric at the bottom of each jar so that I could get glue the fabric to the bottom of the jar. I trimmed the fabric and then lined the top of the jar up with the seam side of the fabric and attached the fabric to the jar with hot glue. I ran another line of hot glue along the edge of the fabric and rolled the jar so that it stuck down to the other end of the fabric and trimmed off the excess. Then I placed the jar upside down and glued the edges down to the bottom. I started with the side opposite the seam because that's the front of the jar and the side that I want to look the best. Then I worked front to back gluing the fabric down as I went. And finally, I grabbed some gray and white baker's twine and looped it around the neck of the jar about three times and tied it with a shoelace bow. And then I repeated the process with the other two jars. And here they are with some simple green stems from Walmart. I love how cozy these look and I think these would look super pretty at night with little flameless tea lights inside too. Thanks for joining me today. If you found me from the Don't Argue the Toss playlist, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my content. I have lots more in store for this winter season, including an inexpensive gallery wall for our newly remodeled family room that you won't want to miss. See you next time. Bye.